in the course of today on your feelings and whether you felt you, you were going to win. Would you like to tell us what your feelings Well, I'm naturally disappointed at not having won. But I think we fought a very hard fight and the choice of the electors uh, went the way it has done, so I have no complaints, of course. This has been a fairly fought election. Did you expect to win? I thought we had a very good chance of winning, but um, as I say, this is a, <laughs> a, a leader of a party in the middle of an election fight, I think, uh, must uh, feel he's going to win, and uh, on the whole, I thought we had a good chance of in the light, it off. Sorry, in the light of your experience of the last few weeks, Alec, would you have conducted the pe campaign differently if you were to start over again I, now? I don't think I would. I, don't, I can't see anything that I really would have done differently, I think. I think it was right to go out into the country and all over, all over the country as far as I could and not stay in London. You reject any criticism of your not staying in London? Yes, I think I do. I was here for three or four times, which seemed to me enough. Sir Alec, you concentrated very heavily on two issues, prosperity and the nuclear deterrent. Would you, uh, with hindsight, have concentrated on other issues instead of those? I don't think so. I think that the, those were the two main issues. I won't repeat them, because <laughs> I've said, uh, said it so often in the last, uh, in the last fortnight or, or three weeks, but I still think that those are the two great issues for this country. And it remains to be seen whether we can, uh, under a socialist uh, government, um, keep our prosperity rising year by year. And also, I'm quite convinced that the people understand more and more the importance of the nuclear deterrent. Well, Sir Alec, we've heard just a very few minutes ago that China has now exploded an atomic bomb. Do you think had they done this a few days ago, it would have affected fundamentally it would have the made, outcome of the campaign? Well, we expected this, of course, and I think, uh, I think it was made public that we expected this, and Mr. Rusk had talked about it too. But um, I think the, perhaps the impact of an explosion, of, uh, actual explosion of the bomb, would have made people think a bit more about the deterrent than they did. Did you also expect the news that Mr. Khrushchev uh, was to be deposed? No. Uh, I didn't expect that he was, uh, would be deposed. Um, one didn't know how much longer his political life would last, but it looked like lasting a year or two, because I think his health was reasonably good. But, of course, he has been deposed, that's the right word. With your experience in foreign affairs and knowledge of Mr. Khrushchev, what effect do you think this will have on world affairs? Well, I can't tell. It depends how far the successor to Mr. Mr. Khrushchev really uh, alters the, the emphasis on the Russian defense program. It may be that he thinks the, the, that they think that Mr. Khrushchev um, paid too little attention to investment in defense, particularly in relation to the American lead and particularly in relation perhaps to China, although possibly they were worried about his uh, policy and the effect that it had in dividing China from the Soviet Union. But I think it's too early to assess this. Coming back to domestic um, situations, Alec, and the composition of the new House of Commons, what will your tactics be in this new House with this rather curious constitution? Well, I think uh, quite clearly we must uh, judge every, uh, everything that's brought forward by the new government uh, on, the, on how it affects the interests of the country, uh, and that we shall do. We shall play a, a constructive part as, a, as an opposition. But would you harry the um, socialist government? If they deserve it, of course. But uh, it depends on what they bring, uh, what they bring forward. You don't anticipate it remains the to be seen how, how far I think they bring forward their program in light of the majority that they've got. And you don't anticipate any more of those all-night sittings that used to go on in 1950-51? I never mind that all-night sitting myself. If, uh, if one gets a sort of second wind about four o'clock in the morning, but I don't think they're a very good way of carrying on parliamentary business. Sir Alec, most experts in the last two days have, have put a majority of ten as about the bare minimum that one can govern effectively with. How soon do you expect another election? Well, I, I can't uh, possibly tell you that, and I don't think it would be uh, much use uh, uh, speculating. The majority looks like being an overall majority of about four to six, as far as I can make out now on the figure. Would you anticipate that the socialist government would have to trim very considerably its policies in the next 12 months, say? Well, I should have thought it would have to be very careful with the, the, rather amb the very ambitious programs that they had if they had to carry them through the House of Commons. What effect do you think this election reversal will have on the Tory party? I would think that it was, uh, well, we're a, a united party. I think it will, it will, um, our workers were extremely keen this time. I think the narrow results in the number of seats will make them keener still. Uh, and so I would hope that we would gain strength as the months go by. Do you anticipate that there will be criticism of you within the party, Sir Alec? I hope not. Do you intend to remain as leader of the party? Yes, the uh, I, well, I am leader of the party, and therefore I intend to lead an opposition, yes. 
Do you view opposition with the same enthusiasm as you viewed the prime ministership? <laughs> well, yes, I, I, I think I'm not, um, I'm not afraid of opposition. I haven't been in opposition, of course, for a very long time, and a short time in the 40s. But nevertheless, I think it will come um, reasonably easy. Although I say we shall play a constructive part in the Conservative Party in the House of Commons. Sir Alec, you said the other day at a press conference that you hadn't yet spoken to Mr. Butler about his interview during the campaign. Have you done so now? <laughs> yes, I have, yes. Would you yes. give any indication of what you said? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Or indeed except, what that, uh, except, of course, we're very good friends and colleagues. Do you intend to uh, remain so? Certainly. Yes. In it never the new occurred to me that we wouldn't. In the new House of Commons, Sir Alec, w would you um, seek to woo the Liberals in any way? I don't think it's my nature to woo anybody particularly, uh, but um, as I say, I think the thing to do is to look at any proposal that's put before us by the government of the day, whether, it's, whether or not it's supported by the Liberal Party, on its merits. If it has merits, well then no doubt uh, we, can, um, we can facilitate its passage. If it hasn't, we shall oppose it. And um, it will be for the Liberals to decide what they do. Sir Alec, I know you've had this put to you before, but I think there is a widespread feeling that Mr. Gordon Walker lost his seat because the Conservative candidate fought on a racial platform. Are you pleased with that result in Smithwick? I can only really, I think, uh, answer for the party as a whole, and I think this includes our candidate in Smithwick, uh, and that is that I've made it absolutely clear, and this has been endorsed, I think, by every member of the, of the party, that in no circumstances shall racial discrimination come into anything we say or do. In another election, if, it, if you felt that it did come in again, would you repudiate it? Well, racial discrimination, I would always repudiate, of course, but we mustn't uh, get away from, we can't get away from the fact that immigration is a problem, and a very real problem in a number of districts, and I made quite clear during the campaign that if we were the government of the day, of course, we should have to control it very strictly, because otherwise it brings about the most serious social and economic problems. So, Alec, do you anticipate that there will be enormously drastic rethinking within the Conservative Party now as a result of the election? I hope there are always rethinking going on all the time. And I dare say, we, 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 if you like to call it drastic rethinking, um, certainly I think we want to do a rethink our, our policies and always keep them up to date and always go, go on looking ahead. How far I would call it drastic, I don't know, but certainly we must um, always keep up to date and um, try and modernise our thinking. Sir Alec, if I might put my last question to you, what are your immediate movements to be now? Well, I think um, immediately I shall probably um, um, just pack up my things and <laughs> move out of Downing Street. Um, next weekend, I hope we'll go home perhaps for a weekend. Political considerations apart, Sir Alec, what are your personal regrets, your most, uh, the things that you regret most about surrendering the office of Prime Minister? Well, I enjoyed being... being, uh, being Prime Minister, and um, I think the responsibility is one that uh, one, one can carry, and therefore um, I'm disappointed that I'm just not continuing to be Prime Minister. I don't think I have any regrets there. One must take the rough and the smooth in, in public life, and you can win well at times, and you must lose well at others. Sir Alec, thank you very much for submitting to this further ordeal today. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much indeed.